Hello, YouTube. Are you a Home Assistant user who dislikes Amazon's She Who Champion name and Google Assistant? Do you hate the thought of some devices constantly eavesdropping on your conversations? Have you been looking for a way to get audible notifications around your smart home in near real time for things like doorbell presses, water leaks, or any other critical notifications? In this video, I'm gonna show you my solution to these issues and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jeff. I've been working in IT professionally for a quarter century now, so you could say I'm a pretty hardcore nerd. My passion is to figure out all the complicated stuff and then figure out foolproof ways of repeating it and then simplify it and turn it into a video so that my viewers can have the same awesome results without all the complicated nonsense that went into initially figuring it all out. Come with me on my journey to make my house the smartest one in town. Now, for those of you that have been following along with the channel, you'll no doubt be aware that I recently upgraded from Home Assistant running on a Home Assistant Blue or Raspberry Pi to running bare metal on an Intel Nook. If you missed the video on how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description in case you wanna check that video out. In any case, I spent about 12 hours yesterday putting most of it back together again and a good portion of today as well. I recorded almost all of it, so I'll have lots of videos coming up. Adding a Honeywell T9 thermostat, configuring an environment card to show the temperature and humidity from all the sensors in the house, doorbell notifications from my Ubiquiti doorbells, adding Blue Iris integration and configuring motion sensors using deep stack object detection and MQTT notification, configuring a binary sensor to tell me if anyone is connected to my guest network, displaying internet uptime, configuring trash and recycling notifications, all sorts of stuff. These videos will be coming up here over the next several weeks. So if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, be sure to subscribe and ring that little bell so that you'll get notified when they get released. If I'm not finished yet, what am I doing making a video instead of finishing it? Well, I have a need to add a couple more TTS announcers to my house. We'd really like one in the master suite and I need another for the main floor. For this task, I've chosen Google Nest Minis. Oh no, they're gonna eavesdrop on you. You'll have to configure Google Assistant. I... Slow down, I'm not using Google Assistant and these things have a nice physical switch on them that disables the eavesdropping, or so they say. But since the internet is always listening from my cell phone, I figure it's good enough that I can at least prevent these things from interrupting my conversation because they thought they heard me ask them something. Good enough for me. I like these things because they're small, they come in a few different colors, and they can be had for as little as $29 if you catch them on sale. Adding them to Home Assistant is pretty simple too. Let's get started by opening up the box for those of you that haven't seen one of these yet. So in the box, we've got the speaker, which is actually pretty heavy for its size. You don't have to worry about the cord pulling it off of whatever perch you've set it on. And we've got the power plug and the cord. I really only got two knocks against these things. The first is that the power cord obviously isn't the same color as the device. So if you buy a charcoal one thinking it'll match the shelf you wanna put it on, you're still gonna to have to deal with a white power cord. The second is that the power cord is proprietary. Everything else these days uses USB-C for power. Uh, why Google chose not to go this route with these is beyond me, but it prevents you from swapping out the cord for a color that you like. On the side on the bottom here, we've got a button to turn off the microphone, and that's the only interface. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered up. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. By the way, the mic's off. To turn it back on, slide the switch on the back of this device. To raise and lower the volume, you tap on the sides of it. Neat. Next, let's get it added to Home Assistant. First thing we need to do is add it to Google Home and configure it. I'm doing this on an Android device, but there is a Google Home app available for iOS as well. Now, for those of you that have multiple SSIDs or VLANs, you'll wanna be on the same SSID as the Nest Mini is. It'll make setup faster and easier. Launch the Home app and tap the plus in the upper left corner. Then tap Setup Device, then tap New Device. Choose your home and tap next. Once the device is discovered, tap yes. Tap yes once you hear the sound. 
tap I agree to legal terms, and then I tap no thanks to sharing device info. Choose the location for the device, then tap next. Choose the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to, and tap next. Tap OK. Your Nest Mini will connect to the Wi-Fi. Once connected, you'll see connected and then a bunch of information screens. Tap next, then continue. And then tap not now to skip voice setup and setting up services. No thanks on advertisements and then a summary. Tap continue and an update will be installed if required. Once the update completes, tap not now to skip the controls. Tap next when it asks you to turn on the microphone and continue. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. Yeah, I think not. Then scroll down to the bottom, tap Finish Setup. Then find your new device and tap on it. Tap the gear, then tap Device Information. Then tap Device Name and rename it to whatever you'd like. Now let's take a look at what's needed in HA to complete the setup so we can use it. Head on over to your Integrations tab and you should find that it's been automatically discovered and added if you've already got other Google Cast devices. A lot of TVs have built-in casting and I've got a ton of Chromecasts for my whole home audio setup, so there's a whole bunch in there already. It'll be added with a default name, so it should stand out in the list. Click on the oddball, make sure you've got the right one, click on the power button. This will make the Nest Mini play a sound. Then just go ahead and rename it to whatever you like. I'm going to call this one Master Bedroom TTS. Then I'm going to add it to an automation to show you how to send text to speech messages to it. And Bob's your uncle. Now, a couple other things worth noting. First, you're gonna to need to define your TTS service if you haven't already. That's these lines of code here in configuration.yaml. Next, Google devices reject self-signed certificates. So if you're using SSL, you'll need to be using a certificate from a trusted issuer. If you need information on how to go about setting that up, you can check my video on how to configure external access. I'll throw a link to that in the description as well. In addition, if you are using SSL, your Home Assistant server must be resolvable internally. You cannot use an IP address in the URL since then you get a certificate mismatch. These also don't work using short name URLs. You must use FQDNs for access. However, it's worth noting that if you're not using SSL, you can use HTTP colon whack whack IP address. For more info, check out the TTS integration docs. I'll throw a link to those in the description as well. On my network, I run an internal DNS server add-on called DNS Mask, which I also covered in a previous video. This allows me to resolve the external FQDN on my Home Assistant server to the internal IP, which makes SSL work on the inside of my network. In any event, I further had an issue whereby these devices wouldn't use my internal DNS server, they would only use Google's DNS servers, which resolved to the external IP of my Home Assistant server, of course, which made them try to hairpin the firewall, Obviously not something I wanted to be happening. My solution was to block these devices from being able to access the IP addresses of Google's DNS servers. This forced them to use my internal DNS server, which of course correctly resolved to the internal IP of my Home Assistant server. You may or may not run into some of these issues with your installation in your environment, depending on how your network is configured. Just know that while these do work and they are cheap, you may or may not have some difficulty with getting the networking bits sorted out. Please. Do not post comments on this video asking me to assist you with troubleshooting network issues. 
The comments section on YouTube is a terrible format for having those types of discussions. At the suggestion of a viewer, I'm working on getting a Patreon page set up. There, you'll be able to find all my code for all of the videos that I've published in a much easier to read format, as well as be able to more easily communicate directly with me for any issues that I might be able to assist you with. More info to follow as I get that done. But for now, I'm more focused on getting my own Home Assistant server put back together than I am with learning how to configure Patreon. Since it'll provide a lot of value to you guys though, rest assured that it is relatively high up on my to-do list. Potential networking pitfalls aside, this setup is super quick and easy to do once you got the first one working. And it allows you to do whatever you'd like for notifications. Text to speech, play a song, whatever. They're just Chromecast devices. Best part is they're cheap and they're relatively unobtrusive, especially compared to some of the eyesore DIY projects that I've seen photos of online. Yikes. I did have someone recently ask me if my videos are more tech how-tos or whiskey reviews. I do love me a good whiskey and from time to time on this channel, you guys may see me with a glass. What do you guys think? Would you like me to share information about what's in my glass in future videos? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope that you found the information useful. I hope you found today's t-shirt funny and I hope that I've earned your subscription. If you would be so kind, please go ahead and give that like button a smack for me. That would help immensely. That tells the YouTube algorithm that this video didn't suck and it should be shown to more people. I'm looking forward to reading and replying to all the wonderful comments from you guys. But until next time, go and automate something, will you?